Hi guys, Sport Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. If we try to summarize what has been happening in the discussion of the notification so far, we have an activity, an event happens in the activity and then you trigger a pending intent. Using that, you trigger a notification. It might be the same situation if you are using a service. A particular condition in a service will trigger an event. Then you trigger a pending intent and once again a notification. Or there could be a possibility that an event is triggered and you broadcast an intent that will trigger the broadcast receiver and through the broadcast receiver you use the pending intent to trigger the notification. So if you observe the common theme across all these scenarios is that the event that is getting triggered is happening locally on the device. So that is why sometimes these kind of notifications are called as on-device notifications or some people even call them as local notifications. I think this will beg a question that is there a thing called as remote notification and if there is a thing called as remote notification where these events are occurring. Well, to understand that, let's think of few scenarios like an uh, email is being received, a uh, wicket fell in a cricket match and a breaking news event happened. Now, we are talking from the point of view of where do these events occur? Well, literally they occur in a real world, but from the software engineering point of view, these are nothing but some kind of entries in a database of a remote server. We can surely say that these events are happening on a remote server. Let's assume that we have applications on the mobile device. There is an email application, there is a sports application and then there is a news application. And whenever email is received on the remote server, email application on the device needs to be notified about it. Whenever wicket fell in a cricket match, the remote server needs to inform sports application. And in the same way, the news app needs to keep itself updated with the latest breaking news. Well, one way of doing it is the email application can send a HTTP request and the remote server will give it back the response. The same can be done with a sports app and even in case of a news app. This way of getting the information from the remote server is nothing new to us. It is just a normal web service integration. It could be a REST based web service integration. This technique is called as polling because the application on the device side will have to keep polling the remote server about the latest information. But this is very inefficient because the application on the device side will have to consume the resources to do these HTTP requests. And the second problem is every time the request is made to the remote server, the remote server might not be having a latest updated information because there might be no latest information available. So the resources are being consumed on the device side without any benefit. So polling is completely a inefficient way of keeping your data updated. And that is where uh, another new approach is used, wherein you use a, another system which sits in the middle between the remote server and the device. Right now, we are going to call it as a middleware because it's a man in the middle between the remote server application and the device. The remote server applications, whenever an event happens, if they need to inform application on the device, they basically send this information to the middleware and the middleware will then pass it on to the mobile application. In this way, you are basically pushing the message from the remote server to the mobile application on the device. And that is why this is called as push notification. Generally, this middleware is called as push notification service provider. And in Android, we use a very specific term which is called as FCM or Firebase Cloud Messaging service. It is the responsibility of the Firebase cloud messaging service to basically orchestrate these push notifications between the remote server and the mobile device. Before Firebase cloud messaging service came into effect, 
there was a another service which was called as gcm google cloud messaging service and even before gcm there was something called as c2dm that is cloud to device messaging service but both of these gcm and c2dm are now defunct they are no more in use so for all practical purpose in the further discussion we will be mainly concentrating on fcm that is firebase cloud messaging service so see you in the next video that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye